You probably already knew that Radiant Dawn is a direct sequel to Path of Radiance. The Trails of Cold Steel games are a sequel to all the other Trails games out there. And Nier is an indirect sequel to one of the endings of the first Drakengard? But the games you are about to see today are also sequels and you probably didn't know about because they just don't have a number or a number two in their titles. So let's go meet them all right now and therefore let's begin! Number 10. Vagrant Story Once again, we're delving into the Ivalice Alliance. All the FFT games and even Final Fantasy XII are connected, but only because they take place in the same world. Every story, including the one in Vagrant Story, is completely independent. However, there are a few things that tie this game to the others being chronologically the sequel to them all. Apparently, Vagrant Story takes place hundreds of years after the events on every other Ivalice game. Its events occur in the Kingdom of Valendia, same name of a certain continent in Final Fantasy XII. The Kiltia religion's base was practically Liamonde, the town where Vagrant Story takes place in. Other details are there and you can find them on the internet. The controversy here is that Yasumi Matsuno, the creator of all these games, said he never intended for Vagrant Story to be part of Ivalice. Nevertheless, Squaresoft thought it would be a good idea as a marketing strategy to connect the game with the other Final Fantasy titles. Interesting, huh? Number 9. Shadow Hearts I put these two at number 9 because I think it's common knowledge that there are sequels, especially the fact that Covenant is a direct sequel to the first game with even the same main character. However, the first Shadow Hearts is also a sequel, but to what? Most people already know this, but some of them don't, so I'll explain. It's a sequel to a PS1 experimental RPG called Kudelka, which I've covered several times in the past. Hearts, however, is its own game with story and characters unrelated to it, except for one. But they take place in the same universe with Kudelka occurring 15 years prior to Hearts. Connections can be seen thanks to the appearance of Roger Bacon, who's also an important character in the Shadow Heart series, meaning they are a direct sequel to Kudelka. The story was written by Hiroki Kikuta, who also composed the music for Secret and Trials of Mana. He actually allowed a manga based on the game and even a novel, both of them tied to a sequel he had planned. But that never happened. Differences with the developers led to Hikuta leaving the company, which is why Shadow Hearts, while still a sequel, had different characters, story and gameplay mechanics. Number 8. Atelier Lulua You know how most Atelier games usually come in trilogies? Each game on each trilogy being a direct sequel to the other, but with different characters. So where does Lulua fit in? Well, the subtitle of the game is The Scion of Arland, right? Arland is the world where the first trilogy on the PS3 and PS Vita took place in. Atelier Rorona, Totori and Meruru are the main titles of it. Lulua is a sequel to these three games actually, taking place several years after their events. Not only that, Lulua, the main character, is actually the daughter of Rorona! Do you need to play the Arlen trilogy to understand this one? Yeah, you kinda do, at the very least Atelier Rorona. Otherwise, you'll probably never understand all the references in the game, I think. The most interesting aspect of Lulua, though, is that her story seems to connect all the games, especially since its major focus is to find out the truth about the whole of Arlen. Number 7. Blazing Souls 
Very obscure tactical RPG from when Idea Factory developed games and compiled hard didn't exist. It was released early on the PS2 and 360, but we only got the PSP port. Years later, it will see a port for mobile devices. It is a sequel to Spectral Souls, Resurrection of the Ethereal Empires, also on the PSP, which is also a sequel to a game we never got. There's little information on the internet regarding the first one, as Resurrection is actually Spectral Souls 2. All Generation of Chaos games and Spectral Force games are connected and take place in the same universe. Blazing Souls actually takes place after the events of these two games and the other series. Everything occurs almost 20 years after the events on the Ethereal Empires. It technically tells a story of how the human genome is intended to become the new dominant race. So if you played Spectral Souls, you'll understand why some things that happen here are because of its gruesome events. Number 6. Suikoden Tactics It is a popular belief that Tactics is merely a spin-off of the Suikoden Saga. It's being treated as such. That's true, but it's actually a direct sequel to Suikoden 4. That game is the prequel to the entire series, right? Tactics merely takes place three years after Suikoden 4. However, the first hours of the game also serve as a prequel, and you even encounter Laszlo and Snow when they're kids in the first mission. A couple of hours later, we leap into the future left by the horrible Rune Cannons and the sinister Kuluk Empire. No spoilers, don't worry, but you don't really need to play Suikoden 4 to understand this one, although it is advised to comprehend several references to it and the origin of the Rune Cannons. It's also explained here at the beginning how the pirate Brando took possession of the Rune of Punishment. I recommend playing both games anyway, despite their mixed reception out there. They're not as good as the other Suikoden games, but they're pretty darn good either way. Number 5. Magna Carta – Tears of Blood Also known as Crimson Stigmata, this is not a Japanese RPG and it probably shouldn't be here. It's from South Korea. But if I didn't include it, I would never find another way to tell you it's actually a sequel. Magna Carta – The Phantom of Avalanche was a Windows exclusive back in 2001, but it was never released outside Korea, not even in Japan. So it's an only in Korea RPG. I've never played this game, so I can't talk about it. All I know is that it isn't fan translated and the Tears of Blood is a direct sequel. And by direct, I mean it. Kalins is the main character in both games, and you can tell he has a dark past that's barely explained during the events of the second game. Well, now you know the reason behind all those plot holes, if you ever played Tears of Blood, that is. Especially the gap between his childhood and his adult life where he's now the leader of a mercenary squad. We see glimpses of his kid life, but we never know what happened to him right afterwards. Well, in the Phantom of Avalanche, he was a royal guard and then a squad leader. I guess all the tumultuous political issues over there lead to the events of Tears of Blood? Number 4. Fantasy Star Portable When this game came out, people knew it was going to have both an online multiplayer mode, but also an offline story mode. Then they played it and found out a lot of references and characters from other games, as if this was actually following the events of something else. Well, they named it Fantasy Star Portable for being exclusive to the PSP, but the truth is, this game is actually Fantasy Star Universe 3. That's right, it's a direct sequel to those other two games on the PS2 and Xbox 360. There's also a fourth game localized as Portable 2, which is a part of the exact same saga being a direct sequel to this one. In fact, some of the characters from those previous games will actually join your party here. It's kind of weird how it was barely advertised as a sequel to the universe games, People had to play the game to notice it was actually following and referencing their events? Hell, that's what happened to me, at least. Number 3. Star Ocean – Integrity and Fatelessness 
During the prequels video I mentioned, Star Ocean The Last Hope was the first game in the Star Ocean chronology. So it predates the famous trilogy we all know, right? So where the hell does integrity and faithlessness fit in? Is it a sequel to The Last Hope and a prequel to First Departure? Nope! It actually takes place between Star Ocean The Second Story and Star Ocean Till the End of Time. Yeah, its calendar is Space Date 537, which is actually AD 2623. So it's 171 years after the events of the second story. Ever wondered why there was always a huge gap between it and Star Ocean 3? Well, now you know! They were saving it for this game! Don't worry, every Star Ocean game is a standalone title and you don't need to play a specific one to understand another. Star Ocean 1 and 2 are the only ones deeply connected, but that's a story for another video. They just take place in the same immense universe, that's all. And if you pay attention to Star Ocean, Integrity and Faithlessness, you'll see some small references to all the other games in the series. Number 2. Soul Hackers Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner was originally released on the Sega Saturn and then ported to the PSP. Neither version made it outside Japan. Soul Hackers, an indirect sequel to it, was also released on the Sega Saturn only in Japan. Its PS1 port remained there as well. 15 years after its original release, a remake on the 3DS was localized and we finally got to play it. Two prequels to these two games were released on the PS2, which we also got, the Raidu Kusunoha games. Ha! Should have included those two in my prequels video, eh? The one thing that ties all of these games together is precisely the Kusunoha name. It's supposed to be a generational thing of a family of devil summoners, and there's always one dude who inherits the powers, like Raido Kusunoha for example. And actually the main character in the original devil summoner is a dead guy inside the body of Kyoji Kusunoha, but I don't want to get into that. Soul Hackers is still a standalone title and you can play it without having to play the others. Just be aware that you'll find several references to the other games in the series, including the appearance of Raido Kusunoha himself. Number 1. Code Vein Let me tell you right from the start that Code Vein is not a confirmed sequel by its developers. All they did was add a huge plot twist during the true ending of the game, which directly connects it to the God Eater series. Don't worry, I won't spoil the game. The controversy this created among fans is surprisingly interesting, as debates never seem to end. Is it a sequel or a prequel or just a spin-off taking place in the same universe? The only fact here is that it does take place in the God Eater universe, thanks to that scene at the end. Code Vein is all about a post-apocalyptic place, mysteriously surrounded by an inescapable mist, ruined by the Revenants. Why can't people go beyond the mist? Is the mist trapping them there to make them suffer or to protect them from something? I got so excited like many fans out there when I saw the ending, and I'm a huge fan of this game, which is why I put it at number one. But this is a spoiler-free video, and out of respect to everyone who hasn't played it, I can't discuss anything further. Play it, and you'll see why it's kind of a secret sequel to the God Eater series. You knew Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse is a sequel to Shin Megami Tensei 4, right? I mean, it's also 4, it's there on the title, yeah, obviously. Fire Emblem Awakening is a sequel to Shadow Dragon, I mean Lucina is dressed up as Marth, yeah. And Sakura Wars, so long my love, is a sequel to another Sakura Wars game we never got. You knew that, right? No, you probably didn't know that. Anyway, that's all for today, people. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!